Proverbs chapter 9. Continuation Solomon writing to us about wisdom. Personified as a woman. But we've seen in chapter 8, Jesus Christ. Now we have in chapter 9, we have two women. We have two houses. And we have two ways. <coughs> uh, God, excuse me, my voice is gone today from street preaching. Allergies. Wisdom has builded her house. Wisdom has a house. Jesus says, I go prepare a place for you, a mansion. She has hewed out her seven pillars. Pillars are strength. Pillars are what holds up. Seven in the Bible is complete. You know what a lot of imitation of the pillar here is when you see the Roman Empire's buildings. When you look at the, the Supreme Court building. That's imitation pillar of the wisdom of God's pillar. She has killed her beast. I guess PETA would be upset. She killed animals. She has mingled her wine. It's a new wine. Mingled make it taste better without alcohol. You know, people say... Didn't Jesus change the water into wine? Yeah, but did he drink it? Did it have time to ferment? Would God make alcohol? Have you not ever heard about new wine, grape juice? And mingled her wine, maybe maybe that's a kind of a Kool-Aid. You know, where you take the powder and you add water to it and you get grape juice or whatever flavor you buy. She has also furnished her table. There was a table in her tabernacle. There are ten tables in Solomon's temple with the bread, the showbread, the bread of life, the bread of the word of God in the tabernacle was six and six, sixty-six books. She has sent forth her maidens. Go get what we need. Go get the people we need. And you see that throughout the illustration of Jesus when he's speaking in the gospel. And there was a father that prepared a, 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 a marriage supper for his son. And he sent out his servants. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Go back to Genesis chapter 1. I mean, don't go there now, but if you go back to Genesis chapter 1 and... Not Genesis, Proverbs chapter 1 and Proverbs chapter 8. That's a street preacher. And it's amazing how many people come up to me, profess to be Christian, when I'm preaching on the street. You're turning people away. That's not what Christ would do. I let my light shine. And my reaction to them now is I say, you don't read and study your Bible. Because they don't. Now, is street preaching the only means? Of, no, it's not. Door knocking, passing out gospel tracts, uh, sitting at a table with a person with an open Bible, witnesses somebody at the, at the coffee break table. But street preaching is found in the Bible. And it, it's reassuring to see that in the Bible. After today, we street preach, and by the Daytona Police Department, and... The Daytona office, city office, has shut us down the public sidewalk, and we need prayer. Now, I, I do believe, my lawyer believes we are right, but there have been legal battles. But where do you get the idea of street preaching? Here, Proverbs. Moses preached to the people. 
Elijah's street preached to the people. James, Peter, John, Paul street preached to the, to the people. Jesus street preached. Listen, they didn't have churches they went into. Church buildings didn't come into Constantine. When he had the marriage of the church and the Catholic Church to prevent Christians from dying at the hands of the Catholic Church. When the, when the Great Awakening and the Great uh, 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 Revivals came to America, and you would have great men as uh, Whitfield. Where I live in Connecticut, Whitfield would come through Connecticut, he'll be in the fields, and he would there would be people working out in the fields. He would find a rock or a tree stump, and he would stand on that tree stump or stand upon that rock, and he would preach to the people. There wasn't, oh, you lost people, come to our church, all are welcome. That was not the case. The preachers went to where the people were. That's Baptist history that many, too many, don't know about. She cries in the highest places of the city. Why? Because that's where all the people are. And you can't do that today because private property. It's not really private property if you allowed the public, but the legal eagles of the wormhole people. Whoso is simple, remember Proverbs chapter 1, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she, wisdom, saith to him, Come. And that's what we do as a witness, is what we do as street preaching when we do it biblically. We are inviting the lost people to come. We are showing the wisdom of the Bible of Jesus Christ. We saw last night in, in Proverbs chapter 8, and I keep on wanting to say Genesis. I don't know. So my Genesis is Proverbs for tonight for some reason. When I go on the street and I preach the way, the truth, and today I said, I clarified several times because something told me, Jesus is saying, I am Jesus, says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Not me. Jesus does. And what I'm doing is I'm showing the people, if you want to be saved, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That is wisdom. When you open a Bible and show a man he's a sinner, that is wisdom. When you say, all right, you know, if you want to go to heaven, just say this prayer, that's foolishness. That's easy believism. I don't pray for that. I don't get involved with it. I don't do it. Who is simple, let him turn hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him. There are people you're going to meet in a public ministry that don't want it at all. We're meeting those people now. They want us to shut up. And then there are people who come up to you and they'll ask you questions. You know, I had a guy last week. I mean, it wasn't about salvation. It was about healing. And I was able to answer his questions about healing. Come. Jesus tells the Christians to go. God says, come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Christians are told to go. The lost are told to come. And it's not a church, my friend. Not a church. You're supposed to bring them. Eat of my bread. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You're to show them the bread of Jesus Christ. And drink of my wine. That's grape juice. Not hooch. Not liquor. Not alcohol. But the pure blood of the grape. The new wine. Which symbolizes the blood of Jesus Christ. 
not to be taken orally, but be taken by faith. You bring the bread and you bring the blood of Jesus Christ and you show them the, well, you know, at church we're having a movie about the tribulation. I'd like you to come. It's not about the tribulation. What if they die today? What if they die this afternoon and the rapture hasn't happened? The tribulation ain't going to do them no good. You got to give them the blood and you got to give them the sacrifice. You got to give them the gospel. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scripture, was buried and arose again the third day according to the scripture. It's not a movie. It's not a program. It's not BBS. It is the gospel that Jesus Christ shed his blood. The bread and the wine. If you don't bring, if you do not bring the blood, you are not bringing the gospel. Wine which I have mingled. Mingled? How did she mingle the wine in the in the bread? God became man, and in the body of the man Christ Jesus. Who is God? The Bible says he had flesh. He slept. He hungered. He cried. He, he got aggravated. He In those veins, Acts 20:28 20, says, it is the blood of Jesus Christ. Acts 20:28 20, says, it is the blood of Jesus Christ. How dare you and abominable do you do if you pretend to say you are drinking the blood of God when before the law, during the law, and in the church age, I'm trying to think of his name now, James set forth the counsel of the church in the book of Acts. We're not to have anything strangled or anything to do with blood. We're to receive, we're to receive the blood by faith. Forsake the foolish and live. What's the foolish? What would what, what be your message if you're a street preacher, your door knocker, whatever it is? What would you do to forsake the foolish and live? Anything that's not Jesus Christ, anything that's not the gospel, any way that's not the way, the truth, and the life, that is foolish. What is foolish? I go to church. What is foolish? I was baptized. What is foolish? I am good. What is foolish? There is no God. What is foolish? I let my light shine. What is right? Jesus Christ. Somebody comes up to me, well, I'm good. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Your goodness has to overpower God's goodness because Jesus Christ is God. He was good, and you'll never overpower the goodness of God. Get out of foolishness and come to life. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Well, come to our church. The church can't save your soul. Well, you know, we have Sunday morning, uh, uh, you know, we, we preach to the, to the lost people. And give the Christians who are in church goat food. Because the Bible says there is sheep or they're goats. And if you're feeding the goats Sunday morning, you're giving the Christians who are there Sunday morning, you're giving them goat food. And they're starving to death. Well, you know, we use that time to, to witness to the lost people. That's what you're supposed to go out and do. Go all in all the world and go into the world and preach the gospel. It didn't say bring the world into the. You got it backwards. Don't get upset with me. That's what the Bible says. Forsake the foolish and live and go in the way. Okay, in the way. Ready? What's the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And we saw that in Proverbs chapter 8. Of understanding. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you get if you weren't here for Proverbs chapter eight, especially Proverbs eight, part two, we showed you Jesus Christ is wisdom. We show we showed you that. If you get Proverbs eight, uh, part two, get them all, but Proverbs eight, verse two, if you got only and that's the only time you got 
Proverbs 8, 2, we, sold you, we showed you Jesus Christ is wisdom. We see Proverbs 9, verse 6, Jesus Christ is understanding. And Jesus Christ is the knowledge. That understanding is what the devil's missing. The devil has knowledge. He knows God. The devil has the wisdom. He knows what to do with God. But he has no understanding of God. He has no understanding of the scripture. He loses. I mean, the, the devil knows the Bible more than I do. And the Bible says he knows his time is short, but does he really comprehend he is going to jail? Uh, hell, I don't know what. Yeah, I'm messing up today. I was threatened to go to jail today. Maybe that's what's on my mind. Going to hell. That's right. 2020 in America, I was threatened to go to jail for preaching the gospel. Verse 7. He that reproveth a scorner. What's a scorner? Eh, you read religion just nothing. Eh, you're just full of hot air. Why don't you just shut up? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I got my religion. It's a bunch of bunk. The men wrote the Bible. Blah, 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 blah. He that reproveth this corner getteth to himself shame. Now, what's that mean? When you are witnessing to a guy and he's a scorner, it's not you are the shame. I am not the shame when I witness to a scorner. But in the eyes and in the mind of that scorner, I am shame. Shame you believe in the Bible. Shame you believe on Jesus. Shame you're wasting your time doing. It's not the Bible and Solomon saying it is a shame for the Christian to witness. It is the shame in the mindset of the scorner of what we're doing. And Paul says in the book of Corinthians, I believe it is, not the gospel, not the message, but the idea to go in the street and scream at people is foolish. People come up to me, and I'm screaming, preaching on the street. Oh, that's foolish. That's what the Bible says. And I turn around like, what? What I'm doing is foolish, but the message is not foolish, according to the modern Bibles that got it all back. He that rebuketh a wicked man, get himself a blot or a spot. All right. Is it wrong to witness to a, to a wicked man? No. Is that what the Bible is saying? If, if I'm dealing with a lost man, a wicked man, I've got myself a block. Absolutely not. Again, in the mindset of that unsaved man who is wicked, they called the cops on it and they told me today because people find me and my words offensive. That's why they that's why they call the cop. So in their mindset, me preaching the gospel and the Bible, I've got a spot. The spot is you're offensive. So many people found Jesus offensive. Many people found Paul offensive. They wanted Jesus and Paul and Peter and John. They wanted them dead. Okay, if you think I'm ashamed, you think I'm a spot. Well, the Bible says about me, how beautiful are the feet them that carry the, the, the glad tidings of the gospel. In the eyes of God, I'm not ashamed, I'm not a spot, but to the unsaved individual, to the world, that is shameful what you're doing. You know, you're just being an idiot is what they think, and they do. And they get offended. Well, that's Proverbs 9 and 7. Reprove, that means blame, not a scorner. Least he hate thee. Now, that's not, again, the Bible says, don't go out and witness. <clears throat> Excuse me. What the Bible is saying is when you go out and you meet a scorner, and you tell them about Jesus, he's going to hate you. So, Proverbs 9, 
tells me Proverbs, <coughs> excuse me, eight, Proverbs chapter 1 tells me, Proverbs 9 tells me, I am not to believe the great lie that everybody's going to get saved. I'm going to meet scorners, I'm going to meet wicked men, and they're going to hate me for what I do in the name of Jesus. And John writes, marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate, hate you. There it is. When John wrote that in 1 John, it's coming out of Proverbs 9, Jesus said to, the, to his disciples, marvel not they hate you, but know that they hated me first before they hated you. So I've come to the conclusion number two. Lie number two. All the world loves Jesus. And to that, I got to say, <clears throat> that man today at the farmer's market would have me to be arrested for preaching the gospel because he just loves Jesus. And do you know how many times I, I heard today well, we, res we respect uh, the religious, and we respect re religious, and, and, and to get out what, what their message is. But you want to put me in jail. And you respect. No, you hate Jesus. And I pray for each person that they'll continue no longer to hate Jesus, but to love Jesus and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved and to repent of their sin. You don't wish fire come down? Absolutely not. James and John thought that and Jesus rebuked them. Rebuke a wise man and he will love thee. That person you will. Look at me, people. We got, we got people who are going to think you're shameful, People think you're a, a, a blot. They're going to hate you. But you may get that one person you're going to meet and going to witness to. And he's going to say, I had one guy today. And I, I got to ask my pastor. I got to ask some people. He came up and shook my hand. And he put some coins in my hand. And I've never seen these coins before. You know what he's telling And he told me, he says, man, keep up the good work. Keep up the preaching. I love it. I have witnessed to people in, in, in jail, and they turned and received the Lord Jesus Christ. And man, they, every time I came back, they loved me. Why? Because they were shown life, and they were shown how to receive the light, and they got the life, and they got the light, and I was able to show them they love it because now they love Jesus. But that is one Amongst how many of verses 7, 8, and 9? Now, here it is. Don't go out witnessing thinking everybody's going to get saved. That's not going to happen. Don't go out witnessing think nobody's going to get saved. That's not going to happen. Jesus said many will go the broad way that leads to destruction, but few will go through the straight gate that leads us to life. I've had few people say, how many people got saved? At the farmer's market. I don't know. How many people have I led to the Lord Jesus Christ openly at the farmer's market? Zero. But I'm not without fruit. I'm not. I, I had a police officer one time, a long time ago. Well, you know, people don't, don't get, you know, you say saved. I'm not there to get them saved. I'm there to plant a fruit, a seed. I'm there to water. God gives an increase, not me. I don't save anybody. I just get the gospel out. I'm that sower. I throw the seed out everywhere, anywhere possible. I, I put God, when I go into a public bathroom, I put gospel tracts right there next to the toilet paper. I've led, I have not been in a public bathroom and led anybody to Jesus Christ. But I may have one day, or I may have already. Maybe somebody sitting on the toilet, read that, read that gospel track, and they got saved. I don't know. Verse 9, give instruction to a wise man. Okay, somebody saved now. 
It is your job to grow them as Christians. April 25th, 1987, I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, Joseph Caswell. That's the last time that Christian ever dealt with me ever in my life. Matter of fact, years later, he would turn and rebuke me. He would return to, to, uh, to deny me. Because I got in the Bible and I got witnessing and I got on fire for the Lord. It's not our job to go out, hey, I got 20 people saved. No, it's our job to go, I got somebody saved. Now I got to grow them in the Lord. You know, who brings a baby into this world, a new birth, and doesn't feed that baby milk and, and give that baby time to grow and that baby teach that baby to crawl, teach that baby to walk, teach that baby everything? It is your job. If you got somebody saved, it is your job, all possibilities, to grow that Christian. Now, we're in Daytona Beach and I've met people. All over the United States and all over the world. Daytona 500 and, and next to Virginia Beach. We're well-known beach. There are people who got saved and they live in another state or even another country. Well, my step is to find them, contact them, find them a King James Bible-believing church. And that's the best I can do. But if somebody gets saved and they're in your in your area, it is your job to try to reach out and grow them. Not the pastor's job, your job. I mean, there's only one time I ever turned it over to the pastor. That was my, it would have been my first wife to be Lisa. I didn't want to witness to her because I didn't want her to believe on Jesus because she loved me. I brought her to the pastor. <clears throat> she didn't realize I was going to ask her to marry, marry me if she got saved. I brought her to the pastor for the very fact is I stepped out of the picture because I didn't, I didn't want to be the influence. I don't bring people to my pastor faster you witness to them. I witness to them. And then I go out and train them. I mean, they come to church, go to another church. I try to go out and and grow them and grow them in the Lord as far as they want to be grown. Give instruction to a wise man and he will be yet wiser. Has anybody you witness to that you have the capability, like I said, they could be out of town. But maybe somebody got saved and they were left by the wayside by another Christian. Is there somebody in your life that's getting wiser in the Bible, wiser to the Scriptures, because you have stepped in to teach them more than what three times a week the church can do? You say, what about you, Stiley? I got one right now. I had two. One got upset with me, and I don't know if he's ever going to come back. I've got these ministries, the Hayward Family Ministry, and there are people who, who download, there are people who watch, and hopefully I'm growing Christians that way. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Too many people, I'll just turn them over to the church. What if the church is wrong? I don't know what to know. How many good churches there are to bad churches? This day and age, we're in the last of seeing church age. This is the church age that God says, yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. Aren't you proud of your, I'm not proud of nothing because this is the last of seeing church age. We're rich. We're one of them. God says you're miserable, you're naked, you're poor, and you're wretched. That's what God says about us. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We have got a worldwide epidemic called COVID-19. We've got the West Coast on fire. We have, we're up to tropical depression number 19 right now passing through Florida. We just had 
two hurricanes at once came into the panhandle. We've got two more hurricanes right now out in the Atlantic Ocean. We've got riots. And I don't see many people fearing God. I see more people fearing of COVID-19 that when I walk in the store the other day, you got to have a mask. I'm going to get ready to start saying, when they, you got to have a mask. you got to have Jesus. I'm going to get ready to start saying that. Because you need Jesus more than you need the mask. Now, Romans 13, I get my mask and I put it on. And people say, uh, sir, you're not wearing that mask right. Ma'am, you're not believing the right. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to start answering that way. People fear everything but fearing God. And when you don't fear the Lord, you don't have wisdom. All right, so. Have you, do you know Jesus Christ your Savior? I'm Catholic. You're dumb. Do you know where you're going to go when you die? I let my light shine. You're dumb. You're ignorant. You are. Because wisdom, the Bible says, is when you fear the Lord. What happens when you fear the Lord? You're going to do what God tells you to do. Today, I fear God. So what am I going to do? What must I do to be saved? You're to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you say, oh, I got somebody, and then you're a fool. You're a fool. And yes, I tell them that. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. You know, there are Christians in churches that have no idea what holiness is. They live Saturday night like hell. And they're in church Sunday morning. Holy, 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 I'm full of baloney. And if you were to give them the doctrine, I, I have to correct Christians. Oh no. Did you know that the mark of the beast is in that needle? They're going to mark it. If they give me that needle for a shot, for a flu, or whatever, I don't need to worry about the 666. And I'm, What do you mean? The mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is after the Christians are gone. What? You don't know what the Bible says about your life? As a Christian, you don't know that if you were to die as a Christian, you'd be absent from the body and present with the Lord. There are Christians out there who are in church that are ignorant of what holiness is. You, I got, I'm supposed to read my Bible? Why did God give it? <laughs> Why would God give us a Bible? So, I don't read the Old Testament. All right, there are copies of the King James Bible, New Testament, but they're usually carried around for people to go out and witness or, you know, to carry something in your office desk or something like that. But there is also an Old Testament to be read, and we saw Jesus in Proverbs chapter 8, and we've seen Jesus in, in Proverbs chapter 9, I think God gave us the whole entire Bible to read the Bible, Christian. Because when you study the Bible, it says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, there's a knowledge of holy, and then you get understanding. Oh, the mark? I don't need to worry about that. Well, what if they mandate that shot and we got to take that shot and it's got an identification in it? When the rapture happens, it will fall out of me and when I go in the cloud. And if the Lord tarries and I die, it'll be in my grave and you already know where I am when in my grave. It'll be where they bury me. You're not worried? I'm not worried at all.
It's plain and simple. For by me, thy days shall be multiplied. The wisdom of God, which is Jesus Christ, is eternal life. He that has the Son, Jesus, has everlasting life. Again, the wisdom is Jesus Christ. There is no other wisdom. I know how to fix a car. Big deal. There's no cars in New Jerusalem. Well, I can do open heart surgery. Big deal. We won't need surgeries in New Jerusalem. Okay? If you want your life to be multiplied, you honor, you fear, and you get the wisdom of God. Wisdom of God, don't smoke cigarettes, and you'll get a longer life. Wisdom would tell you, look both ways before you cross the road. There is no wisdom in the world today, especially in Florida, the United States, USA. Many people today, they'll just walk right out in the middle of the road. In front of cars. That's dumb. And the years of thy life shall be increased. Now you may become a martyr for Jesus. Paul did. But isn't Paul living eternal life right now? Isn't Peter forever living? Does not a Christian... Uh, uh, I forgot that verse now. To be absent from the body and present with the Lord. We don't die. Our bodies sleep, but we live eternally. And we'll go into the eternal life where there are no more years. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. You can't be wise for somebody else. You can't be saved for somebody else. You can't understand the Bible for anybody else. You've got to give account to what you and your wisdom to God. It's not what your spouse knows about the Bible. It's what you know. It's not about what your dad knows about the Bible. It's what you know. It's not about what your pastor knows. It's about what you know about the Bible. You will give an account for what you know of the wisdom and the knowledge of the holy and not nobody else. But if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. Every scorner that scorns you in a public witness will face God one day. Don't you worry. Jesus told Paul, why persecute thou me? Paul was persecuting Christians and Jesus took it personally. All right, now the foolish woman. In contrast to the wise woman. What is absent, I mean, what is opposite of wisdom? Foolish. A foolish woman is clamorous. That means loud. She's loud. Job 2.10. She is simple. Verse 4. Wisdom cries out to those that are simple. So we preach to foolish women. And believe me, I believe that. And knoweth nothing. Of what? Verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. She lacks wisdom. The knowledge of the holy. She, she lacks knowledge. And understanding. She, not, she lacks understanding. And Proverbs chapter 1. One of the people that, that we preach to are simple people. For she... Sit at the door of her house. All right, there's her house. Verse 1 is wisdom's house. They both have a house. On the seat of the high place. Uh, verse 3. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Shut up. Believe on the Lord. She sits in the high places. Wisdom, the highest places. Go to the highest where you can go. The high place of 
verse 14, that was idolatry worship. That was false worship. And that was going on in Solomon's time. And Solomon will build high places to the gods of his wives of the heathen. And this foolish woman is seated there, probably a pew of the high places. We call them steeples today. Of the city. They're both in the city. Verse 3 and verse 14. Call to all the, to call the passengers who go on their way. That's what it's, that's what you do. You you reach out to people as they're doing their business, whatever ministry you are in. So is she. But they don't get offended at the foolish woman because the foolish woman don't bring Jesus Christ. Who boy is my voice going? Who is simple? Uh, verse 13, you are. Did you see that? The foolish woman is simple and she cried, who is simple? Look in the mirror. Let him turn in hither. Well, verse number five, come, eat of my bread. She's saying, come. The world says come, and wisdom says come. They both have an invitation. One to holiness and righteousness, and one to worldliness and ungodliness. As for him that wanteth understanding. Well, there's understanding of wisdom. It's throughout verses 1 through 12. But wisdom's understanding is the understanding of God. The foolish woman's understanding is the understanding of the world and pleasure. That's where the church has unionized itself with the foolish woman to have entertainment. We saw the other day at the church and had a sign. Come to our coffee house and playground. Oh, she saith to him, so she speaks, as wisdom cries out, the world will speak. You see, the world sees the Bible witness as you're loud and obnoxious, but that foolish woman, she's sweet and wonderful. They want wisdom to shut up, and they, but they want the world. Stolen waters are sweet. That is not true. But to the foolish woman they are. And bread, she's got bread. Wisdom's got bread. Do you know what Paul said? Paul said there's another Jesus. Scripture with scripture. Wisdom's bread and wine, verse 5, is the Lord Jesus Christ upon Calvary. Verse 17, the foolish woman who is opposite of wisdom, her bread is another Jesus. Eateth in secret is pleasant. So there's a lot of religions and organizations such as the Masons and all that, that what you can't tell other people what we do. We hide from God. We got our secret junk in a vault in our church. The world act activities that this woman offers, it's nothing of holiness. But he knoweth not, and the people you will meet in the world, they don't know nothing if they don't know God. If they don't, verse 10, have the knowledge of the holy, verse 10, he knoweth not that the death, dead, dying, the way of the world is dead. 
He that has not the Son, Jesus, shall not see light, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. And there, and that her guest, the world, the unsaved, are in the depths of hell. That's the wrath of God. So the way of wisdom is light. Verse 6. Verse 11. That's the wisdom woman. The way of the world, the foolish woman, is death and hell. And if you ever want an interesting study in your Bible, get a concordance and look at the references that have death or dead or dying and hell in the same context. In Revelation 20, death and hell were cast into the lake of fire that burned forever. Why do people go into the lake of fire? Because they did not want the wisdom, they not, did not want the knowledge, and they did not want the understanding of God and holiness and the preacher. Why did they go into the lake of fire? They wanted the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding of the foolish woman that brought them to death and brought them to hell. And there's no other. Jesus said, I am the way. There must be other ways. Jesus said, I am the truth. Well, there's a lie. John 8, 44, Satan. <coughs> Jesus said, I am the life. There is a, a point of death and hell where there is no life. Again, Proverbs 9, we see Jesus Christ. Verses 1 through 12, 12 being the number of uh, Israel. And verse 13 to 18, 666, we see the way of the world. And when you go out to any public ministry that you have, whatever it is, you're not going to get everybody saved. You're not going to save them. God will save them. But you're not going to have 100% results. And then again, you're not going to have zero results, but you may not see those results. And you may, God may allow you to see some results. And when they, you're going to meet scorners, and they're going to scorn you, they're going to mark you as shame. But Jesus Christ will take it personally. You just do what you need to do. Serve the Lord and do right. And please, pray for our Farmer's Market Ministry. Pray for all to be. And may God get the glory.